When looking at graphs, there's a lot of different features we could be interested in. So I'm going to walk you through a few of the main ones, but uh, we're going to start with zeros. Um, I think these are actually really important. They come up, whoops, I probably should do it in blue. Uh, so I'm going to write down this here for the zeros. Now I want you to think about every time you see the word zero, also think it could be called roots. It could be called x intercepts. It could also be called solutions. So these are all different words that are actually asking you to do the same thing. Okay, so if you're ever doing these, what are you really doing? Well, that means you've got some sort of graph. I don't know, uh, it doesn't really matter what I make my graph. Let's just say it's some sort of shape that goes like uh, this. Well, if I want the zeros or the roots or the x-intercepts or solutions, these are all synonymous words here. So if ever you ask a, a question asks to do the roots of something, it means the same thing as finding all these other words. So it means doing the zeros or finding the solutions. In fact, um, x-intercept, I think, is the most descriptive word for this. Because what this implies is that it, it's where it crosses the x-axis. Okay, so that's the key thing here. It's where it crosses the x-axis. I think that's the most important way to say it. So, for example, here in this uh, little example that I just showed you, where this curvy graph crosses this x-axis, well, it crosses it here and here and here and here and here. So this one here has, uh, well, five roots or five zeros or five x-intercepts or five solutions. I hope you get it, but uh, I mean, it can be something totally different. We could have a totally different looking graph. Maybe it's something like, uh, just like this, something like that. If you can excuse the sound effects, but um, here we go. This one right here only crosses the x-axis once. So this particular graph here has only one zero or one root or x-intercept or solution. You're going to see these words come up so often in math. So just see them as synonymous because it all depends on who's asking the question and how they feel like asking it. But this is really what it means. Now, how do you actually do that? Calculating these is maybe a little bit tougher. You may you can do it just by graphing something and taking a look at where it passes. You could actually use your graphing calculator to tell you this answer. Or you could even be clever and calculate it yourself. Now, what are the y-intercepts? Well, those are actually a little bit more straightforward. Uh, that's where it crosses the, well, I bet you can never guess, it's where it crosses the y-axis. So that's actually pretty uh, straightforward. So for example, I can give you another one. So let's just say I do something like this. Uh, here's my x, here's my y, and I've got some sort of weird looking graph. Maybe it does, I don't know, uh, maybe it's some sort of sinusoidal sort of curve like this. And if I drew something like that, where does it cross the y-axis? Well, in this case, it actually crosses at the same place as where it crosses the x-axis. But a different graph, maybe I can draw a similar looking thing, except this time I could take this whole graph and shift it. So maybe I take this graph and I shift it like this. I make it do something really weird like that. Well, then if I look at this, where does it cross the y-axis? It crosses it right here. Now, the good news is when you're trying to find where something crosses the y-axis, this is actually really easy. Okay, so this is easy. Just set x equal to 0. So if you want to calculate this, all you have to do is, in the equation, um, you just set the x value equal to 0, and then that tells you the y value. So for example, um, if y was, I don't know, 2x plus 4, whoops, there we go like this. Uh, I made a really lousy plus here. I'll just try that again. So if I have x, uh, 2x plus 4, hopefully you know what kind of graph this looks like. This is a straight line graph. This is actually a graph that crosses the uh, y-axis, so it has a y-intercept right here, actually a 4. So that's actually pretty straightforward and it's fairly steep. I'm being really lazy with my graph. I'm not putting the x values or the y values. But I can tell you that no matter what, uh, this one right here will cross the y-axis at y equals 4. Now I could calculate that if I wanted to just by taking this equation and I would solve for y except I make Anytime I see x, I put in a 0. 
right? I mean, this may seem a little bit redundant or silly at least, but uh, two times zero is zero, zero plus four is just four. Hey, look at that, y equals four. That's what this value right here should be. This should be at four. Maybe this is at two and maybe this is one and this is three. See, this is getting a little bit messy here, but the key thing is that it's going to cross the y-axis at four. That's what a y-intercept is. Now maybe I'm curious about horizontal and vertical asymptotes. So those I can do as well. Um, so a horizontal asymptote, what's that? That's, well, let's take a look here. So there it's where it, um, well, maybe I'll just give you a graph and show you what it looks like. Maybe that's easier. So if I look at this one right here, I'm going to give you a graph that has a horizontal asymptote. So maybe I draw something, uh, actually I'll draw one that also has vertical. And we'll maybe see the two of them together. So if I look at these, I suppose I should have made these blue just to keep things uh, the same here, but uh, sorry. So I have vertical asymptotes, what are those? Uh, we draw those as dotted lines. In this case, it's gonna be vertical, uh, where the graph does not exist. In other words, where it's undefined. Okay, so I'll say maybe undefined here. And of course here, for a horizontal asymptote, that's the same thing, it's a horizontal line where the graph is undefined. Okay, so if I look at this, I'm gonna give you a, an example of a graph that actually has two asymptotes. It's going to have horizontal and vertical asymptotes. So I'll draw you something, maybe it goes like this. And um, it'll also go something like this, like that. This is actually a graph of y equals one over x, but it's just been shifted over to the right and down a little bit. Uh, we'll be talking about more graphs like this later. But if we take a look at this, there is a place where the x value here is undefined. Right? There is a vertical asymptote here. That's the vertical one. Right? That's this one right here. And there's also a horizontal asymptote. There is a place on this graph, maybe I'll make it green. There is a place on this graph where the y values are not defined. So in this case right here, this would be the horizontal line. In other words, no matter how I look at this graph, the graph can't actually reach this value. It gets really, really close to it, but it can't actually reach it. Same thing with the vertical asymptotes. They can't quite reach them. So those are what um, horizontal and vertical asymptotes are. Now how about maxes and mins? Those are actually fairly easy to do too. Uh, maybe I'll just add an extra page here. And here I'll do this uh, like I should have been doing. So maximum or minimum. Uh, well, that should be fairly straightforward as well. A lot of students don't have problems with this definition at least. So let's take a look. Whoa, that was a bad vertical line, but oh well. Not a very good artist today. So if I look at this then, let's say I have some graph that does uh, this, something like that. That's a quadratic. Well, that has a minimum value. In other words, there's a value of y that is as small as it gets. So in this case, this is the minimum value. And maybe this value is, I don't know, negative two, let's just say. Well, then that would be the minimum. It would be negative two. Uh, sometimes, though, you might have a maximum. So maybe we have something like, I don't know, a graph like this. And actually, it turns out uh, when you do calculus, you'll be looking at the fact that you can have local maximums and local minimums, but that's not so important. So in this case right here, let's just say I go green. I have a maximum here and I have another maximum here. Okay, so those are the points where your graph sort of goes high before it sort of turns around again. So we can have minimums of graphs, we can have maximums, we can have global minimums, which means the graph never gets lower than this. Over here, this is a local maximum because it goes up, goes down, up, down, but then it goes up even higher. So these are all possible, but maxes and mins are just places where it's a uh, where the graph can't go any higher or lower.